Hey guys, welcome back to Periodic Surfco and welcome back to my workshop. So if you are building one of our new 2019 lineup of boards, you will notice that we are using what we are calling the hybrid rail. Now the hybrid rail is a mix between the solid rail that we were using and the more traditional bead and cove style of uh, rail that many other wooden surfboards use. Now there are several benefits to this style of rail and the main three which I think is gonna be quite apparent in this video, is that it is much easier to install. It requires less timber, therefore you are left with a lighter board, but also a cheaper kit, and it has multiple options. So just quickly, you can see here that our new frames have this different stepped kind of tab that is sticking out of the rail. Now this is to help us in alignment, but also space out a hollow section so that we don't have to use quite a thick of a lamination on the outside here to produce our final size. Now the rails are made up of three components that we sandwich together. On the bottom, it is a 12 by six millimeter strip that slides under the tabs and it runs the full length. So we will join a few of these together. Now following that, we have the six by six millimeter strips that reference these little tabs. And then on top of that comes another 12 by six to sandwich it all together and give us a really nice strong kind of joint here, but also allows us to shape it in so that we have a nice solid profile. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is just remove any glue squeeze out from the outside of our frames here so that we have a nice clean surface for our strips to get laminated onto. So once we have a nice clean surface, we can start laying out our strip. So there's a few things we just wanna check though. One is we wanna make sure that our strips are fitting freely underneath our tabs. Uh, so essentially all we're gonna do to make sure it does fit is install it and wherever it hits, we just can kind of thin out some material around there so that it can slide under easily. So once we're happy that that section of the rail spacer is fitting nicely, we can look at getting these curves bent into the nose and tail sections. So what we're gonna do is we're wetting this section of wood, we'll wrap it up in some tin foil, and then with a hot iron, we're going to basically just iron it until all of that steam is penetrating into this timber and making it nice and malleable. So while it's still nice and hot, we'll come in, and we'll start to bend our rail around our section with a few clamps as well to hold it into place. So you should be able to see just how malleable this timber has become with that little bit of steam. Now, while the uh, rail is cooling down, if you were working on a board which had a nice rounded tail like our egg, you would come in and you would prepare your rear section and bend it around that tail. So with everything now kind of fitting, uh, we're gonna apply some glue here and then just clamp this in place, making sure that it is referenced up tight against the rail, but also down against the board. So we'll use a few clamps on the top and a few clamps on the bottom. Okay, so that is the bottom section attached and it is very much the same process for the top rail. However, a few added steps. So the first thing is, as you know, we have the uh, square spacer material that we have discussed earlier, which indexes into the little slots. So we just have to mark the length and uh, create the join where necessary. So when doing the join, if you're just doing a butt joint, which is perfectly fine for this, uh, just try and line it up so it is over one of the tabs. So in other words, the two ends that butt together are supported by material so that it's a little bit stronger. Now, the only other thing to consider with the six by six millimeter strips is that they don't necessarily run the full length of the rails like the 12 by six ones. Now to install these top spaces, it's just basically the same process as the bottom. We've steamed and pre-bent our top 12 by six millimeter strip so it conforms to the uh, the rail's nice and easy without too much stress on the timbers. We've got our uh, six by six millimeter strips that go on the infills on standby. Now the way I like to do this is I like to go the top first and clamp it in position and then install the uh, six by six millimeter rails between them. The main reason for that though is because you'll see once it's installed that these pieces don't run all the way up to the nose or the tail because the gaps get a little bit thin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply glue to the tabs, glue to the top section of this frame here, get our top sections installed, and then come back and install our little strips. So you'll notice where I'm clamping it is actually against the existing rail material, but right behind the ribs, so we're not flexing anything. Now, if you look closely at how we've positioned our clamps, it is so we aren't 
overhanging this strip at all. And that means that now we can actually slide in our support material and then adjust the clamps to be actually acting on both of these things. So the first thing we need to do is just get some glue onto the top face. Now, if you have an issue like we have here where the six by six mil strip isn't flush, that's an easy fix. Just come in with one of your little clamps and kind of when you're clamping it, jimmy it out. And there you can see we've actually got that now perfectly aligned. All right, so that's basically it for the hollow portion of this rail. Obviously you would repeat that on both sides. Then from here, you can proceed and start to fit in the new hollow rail to meet the kind of profile of the deck skins. And to do that, I like to use a block plane and just run it up along the edge. And I kind of tilt my plane so it's matching that angle. So when I'm running past it, we're going to actually bring what was a square edge into the same angle as our deck should conform to. So here, we're almost there on this one, but you can see as I start to remove the burnt laser cut material on the top and transition into the rail, it's actually a very good uh, kind of indication of my progress. So I work all the way up until I'm convinced and happy with the curvature. If there's a little bit of a hollow spot here and there, it really doesn't matter because our deck will overlay all of this. While you're at it, you can also just bring over a piece of uh, the thin polonia press it down over that curve and just make sure that things are looking like they should. And in this case, I think we're looking basically spot on with maybe just a few more passes to go until this is perfect. So once we got that rail fared in, it's just a matter of trimming off this bottom deck and the hollow portion of the rail is finished. Okay, so that's it for the hollow section of this rail and all that's left to do in regards to the rail at least, is the two layers of polonia that goes on the outside, which makes up the solid portion. And so to do that, I've taken the rail strips, which are the 140, 150 millimeter wide pieces of polonia, and I actually just trace the rocker line onto that polonia. So I do it oversized, of course, so we have plenty of wiggle room, but it just means that we're dealing with less material when it comes to getting it to conform to these bends. Now, depending on how kind of aggressive the curve are in your boards will determine whether or not you need to steam bend the nose or the tail but it can't hurt. From there you just glue it on so you glue uh, both of the strips that are getting layered on and then of course you'll apply some additional glue onto the existing rail structure of the board. Then it's just a matter of applying clamps and this is where this system is really great is because all of this frame area that we have here is now clamping area so once it's glued on you obviously just let it dry and then here you can see that i've already fed it in but you just come in you flush trim it using whatever means possible so you can just use a plane to bring it down or if you've got a like a multi-tool with the flush trim saw attachment like i do you can get rid of most of the waste there and then you just fair it in like we did earlier so we continue to fair in that shape of the rib to the rail so that when we lay our top deck over it, it conforms nicely and we don't run into any issues. So I've done that on one side of the board and as you can maybe tell, it's getting kind of late. So I'm gonna end this video here because that is the rail installed. There's not much more to it. And we just continue with the build by installing our support material, doing our top deck, final shaping and fiberglassing. Now, obviously I still have one more side to attach when it comes to the rail on this board, but it's getting a little bit late here. And I don't think you guys need to see that because it's all been laid out in front of you already. So like always, thanks for watching guys. If you've enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up button and leave a comment below and hit that subscribe button because we are putting out weekly videos on hollow core wooden surfboards and everything from the construction to the design and you, you'll like it. Lastly, I'd invite you to head over to our website, which is diysurfboardkits.com.au and check out our full lineup because we've got everything from five foot kids boards all the way up to a 10 foot SUP. And so we're really excited to be kind of making hollow core wooden surfboards accessible to everyone. And as you can see by our demonstrations here, by using our kits, you don't need any special tools, no special machinery, just the desire to build a board and you can do it. So that's it. Thanks for watching. See you next time.